Hello everyone, Lance here. Today I'm going to show you the process of creating this very nice little plateau mountain right here using World Blender Pro 2024. Now for those of you who don't know, World Blender is a node library that I created for geometry node and shader node. This library gives you the power to create beautiful and high detail landscapes like this in minutes right inside a blender. Everything you see here was created right inside a blender. You don't have to go to any other application whatsoever. Okay, if you want to check out World Blender, I'll leave the links in the description. You can download the free basics version or you can buy the pro version. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, we start with a blank world. And first, let's create just anything. Go in and delete all the things. All right. And go to the geometry node editor, create a new geometry node modifier. And now we can go to uh, landscape nodes and create us. And we can create a blank landscape like that. And let's set this to 256 and make it center. Okay. And as you can see, the landscape is a little too big and the viewport is not doing very well with big objects like this. So we need to configure the viewport in the view tab and uh, change this to 10,000 and this to one or maybe 0.1. Now, I'm gonna show you a technique to precisely control the shape of your mountain. So today let's use the curve to control the shape of the mountain. We're gonna be using a Bezier curve now and uh, let's scale it up a bit and apply the rotation and scale, all right? Go to edit mode and uh, subdivide it a little and you can use this curve to precisely control the shape of your mountain. So I'm going to make a mountain of uh, this shape. Okay. So import the uh, Bezier curve into the uh, geometry node. Make sure to use relative. Otherwise, uh, when you move this, the mountain will not move. All right. So we can now go to the displacement and use the shape displacement here and just go ahead and drop in the shape displacement and connect the shape into the shape slot like so. And as you can see, we are now having some nice displacement using the Bezier curve. And right now the resolution of the curve is not very high. That's okay since uh, you can always resample the curve. Go to uh, operation and resample curve and increase this number to resample the curve, like so. But now we are limited by the resolution of the mesh, so you can always increase the resolution here. But uh, anyway, let's just leave it as that. Next, let's uh, configure the uh, displacement a bit, make it spread a little more and make it a lot higher, maybe even higher, okay. And increase the steepness to maybe two or 1.5. Yeah, I think 1.5 is good. Next, let's drop in a uh, uniform terrace node. There we go. And I think we should increase the resolution to 512. Okay. And this is going to be a very small terrace like that. And we will duplicate this and make it bigger, maybe that much. And another terrace, this time even bigger, like that much. And another one, this time it's going to be really, really big, like that. And uh, let's try increasing the steepness of the last terrace a little, okay. And uh, I think uh, the, the height is a little too much, so I'm going to lower the height a little. There we go. Okay. I think we should spread this out a little more because right now the, the slope is a little too steep. So anyway, let's move on. Right now, everything is perfectly straight, but in reality, there should be a little bit uh, of curvature in these uh, layers. So we will drop in a noise displacement and displace the landscape up like that and uh, decrease the height, maybe 50. Yeah, 50 is good and subtract this by 25 meters so that the base is uh, roughly around uh, zero height. All right, the base displacement is complete. And the next thing we need to do is to simulate the erosion. This is actually the most important part. 
So drop in the particle erosion node and connect the wire over like so and disconnect this wire. In order to save time, we need to put in a bake node. And right now, don't connect this to the output yet. We need to bake before we connect. Otherwise, it will just run everything before we can bake and then it's going to run everything again. So activate in viewport and bake. And let's wait for a few seconds. All right, it's done. And uh, let's see how long it took. It took 32 seconds for the erosion node to run. And let's connect this to the output. And as you can see, the erosion is a little too strong. Maybe this is what you want, but in this particular case, this is not what I want. So I'm going to uh, tweak this uh, erosion node a little bit. So after a few tries, I figured out a set of numbers that works for me. This one should be 0.1, this will be 0 0.05, and four passes, and leave everything else as default. And again, we will bake the landscape. There we go. This looks very nice. And now let's finish the landscape. You can drop in the landscape to object node. It's in the helper section, and you can apply the material. So currently there is uh, this material, this blank material. So let's just assign that. And uh, I don't want the uh, smooth shading. And uh, let's set the convexity to one meter and maybe two meters. All right, that's it. The landscape creation is pretty much done. The next thing we need to do is to create the texture. I mean, the material for the landscape. So let me show you again the notes that uh, I used to create all of this. Let me just open up this a little more. There we go. And these are the notes. Okay, let's switch to the shader editor. There we go. And uh, before we create the shader, we need to configure the uh, render engine because the material notes here made use of a lot of procedural textures. So EV is gonna freeze, right? Maybe it's not going to freeze, but it's going to be extremely slow because the EV is not very good with complex procedural texturing. So yeah, let's use cycles and use GPU, all right? And turn on the noise. Let's leave everything as default, okay? So get rid of the principal shader and drop in the quick rock, quick dirt, and quick debris, all right? First, let's check out the quick debris and uh, let's see, we need to create a light. So go to go to the world and in the texture section, we have this artistic sky texture. Just drop it in like that. And uh, yeah, as you can see, we now have a nice light to our scene. And here we can control the sky intensity because right now the, the shadow is a little too dark. So I can increase this to three. And I think that's good. Let's switch back to the object. And uh, since it's a plateau land, so uh, the color is going to be somewhat like brownish, like this. And uh, I think the details are a little too big. Basically, this is a one kilometer landscape. So this kind of details is a little too big. So here we can reduce the detail size to 0.5 and we have a much nicer details. And uh, have a, having a closer look, I think the big rocks are a little too much. So I'm going to lower this to uh, something like that to get rid of some of the big rocks. Okay, that's good. And uh, next, I want to get rid of the moss color. So set this to something like that. Okay, that's good. This is just the debris. This is going to be covered up by the dirt, which is this layer. And again, this is a kind of like a desert kind of land. So there shouldn't be any green. I'm going to get rid of the green, like so. All right, maybe that much. And make it something like brownish color. There we go. All right, now we can mix these two together. And we can use a select slope node to blend between the two, like that. So on the walls here, we have the debris. And on the flat region, we have the dirt. And uh, let's lower the angle and increase the spread so that we have a smooth, smoother blend between the debris and the dirt. Okay, that's good. 
let's move this down here and the next thing we need to do is to mix with the uh, rock so let's have a look at the rock currently it's a little too gray so we need to change this to brown as well something like that and again I want to reduce the uh, detail size and this is the vertical variation you can also tweak this to have some color variation along the uh, vertical direction okay now let's decrease this a little like so and I also want to decrease the bump a bit okay maybe this is good let's mix these together and we will use the dirt layer to drive the mixture there we go and now it's starting to look good but there is one thing is that down here this is not good because at the end of the day the uh, particle erosion is not a true representation of reality in reality there are other mountains nearby and uh, basically the wind will carry the dirt all over the place but here the only dirt in the scene is from the mountain and as you can see there is not a lot of erosion so there is not a lot of dirt here and also up here we have no dirt at all because there is no mountain up here that uh, let the dirt fall down here so there's no dirt up here and that's no good that's not good it's not uh, how reality works because in reality uh, we have wind carrying the dirt all over the place so we need to fake this somehow and fortunately it's actually quite easy so again we will use this uh, select slope but this time we will use the normal produced by this rock material it's gonna be like this okay so this time we will invert this mask and we will select an angle like this and now we can use a math node to uh, combine these together using a maximum operation so we have a mask like this there we go but right now we have a little too much dirt on the walls let's check out the dirt so you see the dirt is kind of sticking up the walls like that and I don't I don't like that I want uh, to get rid of the dirt on the wall so just create a map range node and configure these numbers to get rid of some of the dirt on the walls but that's not enough as you can see we still have a lot of dirt on the wall so I will get rid of that using a, another select slope node so copy this using the same input the custom normal and this time we will multiply this mask with the new select slope node okay and let's check out the mask and we can now increase the angle to let the dirt stick on a certain angle and if the slope is higher than that angle then the dirt will not stick at all so this is a nice dirt mask and let's check out the result and there we go and that's it we have a very nice plateau mountain right inside a blender created using just a few notes and all of this was created procedurally so basically at any given time you can go back and uh, change the shape of the mountain by changing this curve so let me just turn on the in front and uh, you can precisely control the shape of your mountain using this technique okay so let's back again go back to the geometry node and back once more and there we go you have a nice custom shaped mountain but right now this curve is a little too smooth what if you want to make it a little more rough you can't possibly go in and add more points and just move them manually right so in this case I got you covered just go back here before the shape displacement just put in a warp landscape node like that so let's see there we go so you see the the displacement is messed up like that and uh, I just realized that the resample curved node here is causing some troubles so let's just get rid of that and the trouble went away so you can configure this breakup I mean this uh, warp landscape node to uh, control the roughness of the curve like that let's increase the details some more okay and uh, let's see how it looks so it looks a lot more interesting right and uh, yeah let's back again to see how it looks there we go 
our mountain, I mean, our plateau is a lot more interesting this way, right? Let's render. And it looks very nice. Very nice. Okay, that's it. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.